Hi, my name is Simon Mahayevsky, and today we're going to look at Java inheritance and uh, polymorphism. We're going to then run the code in the web browser compiler, and then later I'll show you how to do it also at the command line so you have a different perspective on the code. And then we're going to look at uh, BlueJ, which will help us to visualize inheritance and polymorphism. So let's get started. We're going to start in uh, the W3C Schools uh, website. Now, this is a really, really nice website that uh, allows us to consider uh, a number of topics about Java. And uh, if something seems uh, difficult to understand, you can always look back at a previous tutorial with example code. And uh, as you can see, uh, th there's a number of different languages that this website uh, covers. It's, it's a really, really uh, nice way to get introduced to a new programming language. So now let's talk about Java inheritance. This happens to be uh, a very important uh, topic for Java because the inheritance is really the uh, key of object-oriented uh, programming languages and uh, Java was one of the first ones that really really was successful with uh, uh, inheritance with polymorphism and the other features of object-oriented programming prior to that code was written from top to bottom and often we call that uh, spaghetti code why because uh, it was really hard to figure out where you were in the code during execution and code often had to be rewritten, copied and pasted to, uh, uh, to allow uh, the, the real world functionality. What inheritance allows, in short, is reuse of code. In other words, you write some difficult code once and then as you try to uh, implement functionality for similar situations, you get to reuse that code. So think about uh, maybe a factory like Ford uh, creating a, a vehicle and then you get to just drive it and uh, maybe you get to repaint it to change some properties but you do not have to build in your own garage uh, that initial vehicle. And so that was the beauty of uh, inheritance uh, uh, early on when, when Java was uh, getting uh, just super popular. And so in Java inheritance, we have the idea of uh, subclasses and superclasses. Another way to say that is that there is a parent class. The parent class is also called the superclass. That parent class might have that heavy lifting code. It might have some important stuff that multiple similar types of code is going to share. And then subclasses or children uh, are the other classes that are inheriting from the parent. So the idea is that there's one parent and multiple children so that we can reuse the difficult code multiple times. Well, let's go ahead and look at an example. So in this uh, uh, particular uh, tutorial, we have example of a vehicle. And so a vehicle is built and a brand is set as Ford. Now this is where the engine is created, this is where all the difficult work of engineering uh, might take place. In our code, for simplification, we created uh, a, a method for honking. And so you honk and then on the screen will display toot toot. Now, of course, uh, there would be uh, other code that uh, uh, makes the vehicle go down the road, makes the vehicle perhaps um, uh, open doors, uh, closers, so all kinds of methods and properties that make this a uh, useful code. But that's class vehicle, that's the parent class. Now out of a vehicle perhaps we could build what? Well, uh, we could build a car or a truck or maybe some other type of a vehicle. And that's the idea of a parent and then children underneath that. So in this instance we're building a, a subclass car and it extends vehicle. So the keyword extends uh, creates inheritance. Now we did not have to tell the car how to honk the horn because that comes already from the parent class. Now we are going to set the model to Mustang. So Ford is set at the parent uh, class and Mustang is set at the child class. And so then we'll go ahead and create 
a main function that allows us to actually execute uh, the code and we're going to say hey out of the class um, car create my own object called my car and so then the compiler will go back to car note that it extends vehicle so it will create a vehicle first and then apply all the additional properties and methods of a car and then we can actually honk the horn on our uh, on our own object so let's see how this works we're going to go ahead and grab the uh, the code by the way we can of course uh, click right here run the example and when we do run the example it's a little bit simplistic in that it does display what happens but it doesn't allow us to edit some of the other uh, languages uh, in uh, W3C schools allow us to edit the code then execute it but but not for Java which is why we're going to use a couple of other tools but even here we can see that uh, it's going to display to toot why because we are going to honk the horn on our object the object of course created a child class first but the vehicle the parent class knows how to horn, uh, honk the horn and that's why toot toot is getting displayed but then of course we're going to also display a couple of properties we're going to display the brand and the model and and that's going to um, to execute uh, uh, the rest and notice that uh, in, in this particular example the uh, test uh, uses slightly different code it says my fast car instead of just uh, my car uh, so we're going to work with our main example code here let's navigate to codechef.com which happens to be um, a really nice uh, online uh, compiler for actually multiple languages so we could choose here uh, C++ or, or, or Python and, and so forth uh, we're going to use Java and we're going to remove the uh, sample code we're going to paste in our code from um, W3C schools so at this point we have our parent class we have then built a child class and then we're going to execute this with a main now in this execution we're going to create our own object the object is going to instantiate the subclass car and it'll extend vehicle which means that it will inherit all the code from vehicle and let's go ahead and run it and as we do uh, this happens through the web browser so it's going to be uh, slightly delayed but uh, momentarily it's going to give us um, uh, the results here we go so it says toot toot yeah and it says it's a Ford Mustang so it says toot toot because we honked the horn and it says Ford Mustang because we displayed those properties well very well let's go ahead and uh, move to our next uh, lesson on uh, polymorphism so now that we know how to inherit from another class the related idea is that classes can have methods that are named exactly the same but those methods then can do different things and depending on whether using a child or a parent class that code will be different all right well let's let's see how this works in a in an example now we're talking about animals so our parent class is of an animal and uh, because we don't know what the animal is yet uh, we're going just to say that the animal makes sound now our child classes for pig and for a dog they both extend animal which means that they will inherit from this parent class but notice that we're using the same method so the same name of a method both in the parent and in the child but we are able to use different code here see that is polymorphism meaning it is the same name of a method but different code so different functionality let's look at an example so we still have our class um, 
uh, and uh, our, our child or our subclasses. But then also we have the uh, main class, which is our test class. This is how we can execute those classes, do something with them. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, put those classes to work in, uh, in our browser. So at this point, we're going to have our main function. In the main function, we're going to first build just an animal object, just the parent class by itself. And when later we're going to make a sound, that sound will come right from the parent class. Then we're going to build two more objects out of the child classes. Notice that it is the same method that we're executing. That's the idea of polymorphism same method, multiple results, multiple uh, types of code that runs. And so as we execute it, it's going to, uh, again, create these objects and then run the methods on them. And so as expected, we have the parent class speaking, we have the child class, and then the second child class or subclass. Okay, so let's take a quick look now at uh, how this is going to look in uh, BlueJay. So BlueJay is going to be uh, a nice uh, uh, environment that allows us to visualize the code. Notice that I have my parent class. This parent class is animal and it's going to have a method that uh, makes this generic uh, sound. And then these arrows means that pig inherits the code from animal. Now pig is going to implement a method called animal sound and it's going to change it. It's going to provide different code, different functionality. That's polymorphism and the same for the dog, different functionality. Now that's the nice thing about BlueJay is that we get to visualize again the relationship and we get to run code right through this interface. So our main class now is going to instantiate the objects and execute the methods. And we'll do that by right-clicking on it and executing the main. No parameters for this execution and the results are that the parent class speaks, the child and the second child does as well. Well, uh, it's all the same Java code. We ran it in the browser. We then ran it in BlueJay. Let's take a quick look what this might look like if we run it on the command line. So we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, clear the screen here. And let's go ahead and create our code. We're going to put our code into a file called code. It actually doesn't matter what we call this file. This file is going to have uh, our individual classes and then our test class. Because we are putting everything in the same file, when we run the compiler, it's going to separate things into individual classes. Uh, so uh, Java C is, is the command line uh, program uh, for the compiler. Let's go ahead and compile the code. Now the code is compiled and notice that we now have not just the file that I created uh, in the text editor, this is the humanly readable code, but we also have four other classes. Now, these uh, classes are the parent class, animal, then the two child classes, and then the main class that uh, has our code, um, our test code, where we are actually instantiating um, the objects. So now let's go ahead and run it. We're going to say Java and uh, in this instance we're going to uh, execute the main class. And so as we run this, this the test code we can see that the parent class speaks and then the two child classes speak. And this is how our, our code works in the command line. Now we could also now edit the code. Oops, not this one. Uh, we would edit the humanly readable code, the, the Java code, and perhaps we're going to modify something. Um, perhaps uh, in the dog section we're going to say the dog says bark. 
So we now modified what a child class does. We did not touch the parent class, which means that we likely didn't break what uh, the rest of the code uh, in this particular application does. But we were able to uh, to minimize the changes just to the code that we are in charge of. Now, if there is a serious update that needs to be done, if there is something basic about an animal that needs to be changed, we could, of course, modify the parent class. But this can be done by a different team. This can be done uh, in a different location at a different time through a different change um, management system. Now, if I run the program, uh, if I was to execute the program one more time, notice that it still says Bow Wow. Why do you think that is? Well, Java is not an interpreted language, meaning the moment you change the code, you don't uh, see the results. You have to compile it. So, what I have to do is a step I did at the beginning, and that is I have to compile my uh, code. Okay, um, and a uh, great example of trying to compile already compiled code. Instead, of course, I'm going to compile my uh, Java code. So, compiler takes us from the humanly readable code into uh, code that uh, the computer can understand. In this instance, it's the Java um, uh, uh, machine. Uh, Java Runtime Environment, JRE, and so uh, we need to compile into the class file so that we can go ahead and e execute it. So we'll go ahead and run it one more time, and this time notice that we see the changes that are expected. So the dog says bark, and so that was modified in our code. Uh, previously it said uh, bow wow. Well, I'd like to thank you for the time, and uh, I uh, encourage you to review uh, the tutorial. Uh, notice that uh, in our code uh, there were other uh, interesting uh, statements, such as this idea of a protected um, uh, modifier. Well, just above where we were discussing uh, inheritance and polymorphism, you can review the Java modifiers and uh, specifically see how the protected modifier applies to what we discussed today, and that is inheritance. Thank you very much.